As you can see, from a distance, chambers all look alike. Um, they've got the same shape, same size, they go to the same pressure, but that's a bit deceiving because when you go in and take a close look at the chamber, that's when you will start seeing the different quality features, the safety features, the detail, attention to detail that one chamber might have over another. This particular chamber here is a brand new chamber right off the line. It's a competitive chamber and you can take and look and see if how this is built. There's slack over here on the window. And while this does not look like it's a problem, this is a problem waiting to happen. In time, as this wears and tears, it's going to be pulling and tugging against this other material, the, the window material. And in three to six months, maybe in three years, that's going to start tearing apart, separating, and the pressure is going to pop it out. And that is a huge problem for us. That's a massive burst it can create. And we're not, we have to be concerned about putting a patient in when the chamber is brand new and also when it's three or six years old. Comparing to this to our chamber, the Oxy-L chamber, again, it looks the same. But if you look at the detail, it's a perfect seal. There is no overlap here that is not sealed. It's perfect. So when you look at a chamber, or when we look at our chambers that are three years, five years, eight years old, we see the exact same seal that we see here on this brand new chamber. And that's what we have to strive for, perfection. We cannot compromise in safety. And that's just the window. If you look at um, uh, um, the testing we put the windows through. This is with every chamber that we build, we build extra windows and of each batch we test, stress test these windows to see how much weight can they pull in this direction. We literally clamp these down and put weight on this to see how much it can handle before it starts ripping. And we need to make sure that the weak spot that we've created by creating a seal, we want to make sure that that weak spot does not give but we want the material to give. And when we've done that, we've made a seal that's stronger than the original material. Because any time you add something to a chamber, you've created a weak spot, and it's our job as a manufacturer and as an engineering team to, to figure out how can we build a seam that does not weaken the original material that uh, that, that chamber's constructed of. If you look at the window from the inside, you'll notice that the seal is even, and it's a single mold design that has no blemishes. This is crucial and important because that's the only way you're going to have a strong seal that will stand the test of time. When we look at the window seal from the inside out now, you can see that the way this manufacturer sealed it, it's not evenly done. They've gone in and stamped it several times, creating blemishes, which is a problem. These are, the, these are weak spots at a place where you're bonding two different materials. And this is a lack of experience, the way, it, the way we see it at OxyHealth. We've never shipped out a chamber this way because this would never pass our quality control tests. So windows are just one part of it. We can look at the flange. A flange, to, uh, for those, uh, for if you don't know what that is, it's any time we put a port on it, we call it a flange. And again, you've got a strong material here. Urethane is, is as best as it can be. And now we've introduced, put a hole in there, we've installed a device on there. So this becomes a weak spot. We pay a lot of attention to this detail on how we reinforce that area that we've weakened. And again, when we do our testing, we do pull tests. This is another flange. This is what something like this would screw into. We go and do pull tests to see how does this react with time and weight and how does it start separating. We want it to tear over here where there's no seal rather than where we've created this seal. And every single time it has to survive and be intact. We can't see any slippage over here when it's brand new when it's two years old, six years old, or ten years old. Comparatively, this, this competitive chamber over here, if you look and see, they've not paid much attention to the seal process here. So they've created a weak spot, but they haven't reinforced it. They've got maybe a half an inch, three quarters, not even three quarters, half an inch I'd say. And half an inch of seal is all that's protecting that weak spot that they created. So in time, this will fail. And taking a look at this competitive chamber, we see a serious problem with the way they've designed the airflow system here. They're putting air into the front, which is fine, but they're relieving it right at the head, not even halfway. And that creates a concern for us, a serious concern, because we've got a CO2 buildup in the back of the chamber. And if the patient were to slide down, they'll be breathing stale air. So looking at the way we design chambers, 
from the get-go, we've always put the air in the front, and we've floated through the back chamber and relieved it through the back, through two relief valves, redundant relief valves. And in our labs, we've actually monitored airflow to see how does smoke travel through it. So we put colored gas or colored smoke, whatnot, flow it through the system and see if we're pop properly flushing things out. Had the competitor been doing something like this, testing, they would never have designed the chamber this way. It takes a lot of time and effort to go through this type of testing and design process to know that what you've done is being done, is, is working properly as it should. So attention to detail, can't stress it enough when it comes to safety. So let's deflate these two chambers and compare them inside out so we can get a closer look. Before you can open the zipper, when I look at how they've designed the outer part of the zipper, it seems like this, this company has been more interested in cosmetically preparing the chamber rather than being concerned about safety. While this seems nice and gives it a clean look, it's a problem again because here you've got an entry egress area where there's going to be a lot of traffic. A patient's going in and out, um, they're fumbling, they're kicking, whatever it may be. And you've got these two loose flaps that aren't stitched even, they're sealed but not stitched, but they can, they can tear. So in time, this is again a problem for us. We don't know if these people have done this, the, the cycle tests, which takes several years, takes, took us almost eight years and is still continuing. What will happen in six years, five years, even two years? How is this going to hold up in time? Um, the material in itself is very flimsy, and this is, the, this is what the chamber is completely constructed of, much thinner material. While it's easier and lighter to open up and, and all these things, um, it does collapse because of the thin material that they have. But again, it's not just the collapsing that we're concerned about. We are more concerned, OxyHealth, about how, how well the chamber will hold up under pressure. How much load can this material hold? So we, we don't care about cosmetics. We care about safety. Taking a look at this, uh, our chamber here, material automatically, you can see, it, it is much thicker. It's twice as thick as the others. And we, we stitch uh, up to the edges so that if there's uh, the first stitch breaks, then the second one is always there to, to back it up. It's neatly done, so that's as close as we can get. We, we cared about cosmetics, but primary focus for us is always, is always safety and how strong the construction is because this is a weak point in the chamber and we must build this as strong as possible and pay close attention to the, the, the weak spot, uh, pay close attention to how strong it is and make this area the area that does not fail if it's overinflated. This is an interesting zipper system this manufacturer's used. Well, they've used a good quality zipper, um, YKK, I see. It doesn't make sense. It seems that they knew that OxyHealth had a um, two zipper system, so they were saying, let's build a chamber with two zippers. But they didn't see the purpose why we had two zippers. Here, this outer zipper carries a load. When it's closed, it carries a load that's pulling on it about 5,000 pounds pulling on the zipper. But the second zipper's got so much flack in there, because they only use it to seal the air, that the entire load is being carried by this outer zipper. So it doesn't make sense. In medicine, you must have backups. And in, in medical devices, you have to have backups. If you have a device running on power, you've got to have a power backup. And here you've got a backup that's a pseudo backup that's just there for cosmetic purposes or just because somebody else has a second zipper, they've got one. Our zipper systems have a purpose. If we have something on the chamber, this, it's there for a reason. The outer zipper, there's a, there's a bladder seal and there's an inner zipper. And if you look at the way it's constructed, they're both sharing the load. Each zipper, we, we do hoop tests on this and we do stress tests on the zipper. And it's equally distributed between the bottom zipper and the top zipper. So now you can see that you're putting a, a half the weight on the outer one and half the weight on the inner one. This is difficult to do. It's, it's calibrated. It's got to be perfectly designed, perfectly built. Not designed alone, but just perfectly built. That if, if it's not done right, then one zipper ends up carrying both loads. So every single chamber that we build, we do stress tests and we say, and we make sure that the both zippers can and do carry the load. This is critical. The zipper is the one place that this chamber can fail because it's got moving parts, it wears out. 
This is what you've got to pay a lot of attention to. On a brand new zipper, it's going to work fine. But when the zipper gets two years old, three years old, has 500 cycles, 5,000 cycles on it, you better hope that you've got a backup because the way these competitors are designing these chambers, they're just slapping these things together and not thinking things through carefully. So that was just a quick look of how our engineers evaluate chambers. And it should give you some ideas of what kinds of questions you should be asking the manufacturers when you're looking at the other models out there. Because a picture doesn't tell you the whole story.